welcome to episode 41 of the Tyra Cycling Podcast. Before we start today's podcast, I need to ask a very quick favour from you. At the moment, about 80% of people that watch our videos on YouTube don't subscribe to our channel. Today in episode 41 of the Tyra Cycling Podcast, we talk to Mars Minerals' Clayton Woodward and Craig Vaughan. Recently, Mars Minerals announced that they had won a contract to design and manufacture a new pin mixer for Warsaw Poland-based Contact SA. People may remember Contact SA, who are another tire recycling podcast interviewee. Off the back of this, we thought it was a great opportunity to welcome Clayton and Craig to the podcast. So without any further ado, let's get on with the interview. We hope you enjoy this episode. Let's go straight into this. And uh, Clayton, if you would like to tell us a bit about who Mars Mineral are. Mars Mineral is a technology equipment supplier associated with agitation agglomeration. We take dust, fines, and powders, and we increase their sizes for to increase uh, material handling characteristics make material non-dusty, uh, and that's uh, densify the material. We work in a number of industries, uh, in particular RCB right now, but we also work in the fertilizer industry, uh, kitty litter. Uh, we're doing some work in the chicken manure industry. So a lot of different industries that produce a waste product uh, that's a dust, fine, or powder, uh, we're able to help them repurpose that material uh, and reuse it. Been around since uh, 1972 and uh, so God's will be around for another 50 years. Well, let, let's hope we can help you reach a few more customers in the uh, pyrolysis sector. Uh, so, so Craig, can you tell us how the equipment that Mars Mineral produces fits in with the pyrolysis sector? Uh, sure can, Ewan. The key to our technology and to pelletization of uh, the RCB powder is the Mars Mineral Pin Mixer. Uh, it's a piece of equipment uh, that takes uh, RCB powder, mixes it with a binder, which uh, in the overwhelming uh, number of cases is simply water, and produces green pellets. Uh, that are subsequently dried and uh, ready for uh, packaging and shipment to target customers. The uh, Mars Mineral Pin Mixer has the unique capability of generating pellets in the size range, uh, typically 125 micron to one millimeter size pellets and requisite hardness, uh, typically in the 20 to 50 gram force range that are required by rubber and plastics manufacturers in particular. And uh, so this is generated uh, on a continuous basis with the Mars Mineral Pin Mixer. Uh, so there are uh, a number of advantages operationally in terms of cost of manufacture using part uh, the Mars Mineral Pin Mixer uh, as well as uh, simplicity in the operation itself uh, to generate these pellets. You make it sound very simple, a very simple process. Um, are there any challenges to producing the, uh, the pellets that the, the industry requires? Well, there are challenges that are faced with each uh, manufacturer producer's uh, particular powder. Uh, feedstocks can vary from one manufacturer to the next. Pyrolysis conditions, pyrolysis equipment, uh, basically the upstream operations from pelletization be, can be quite variable. And those variations find their way into the nature of the powder that's generated from that process. Uh, consequently, uh, when you get to pelletization, uh, there are going to be some adjustments that are required in order to generate pellets uh, from a given manufacturer 
to meet specifications for the broader, uh, let's say, rubber industry uh, customers. And one of the things which, uh, again, is a fairly unique capability that Mars Mineral offers to its customers is our testing capability. So we can take a prospective customer's powder, uh, we can pelletize it in our facility, uh, we have pilot scale equipment, and we can generate uh, pellets that will meet um, market specifications uh, for the target industries. And so for each customer, essentially, we customize and optimize process conditions uh, to pre be able to produce pellets that meet the uh, requisite industry standard uh, on a uh, consistent basis uh, with high first pass yield, which uh, is, I'm sure our customers are aware that that drives uh, your cost of manufacturing and certainly drives uh, profitability and pricing. The, the feedstock that reaches the, the, the pelletizer um, has to be of a certain uh, specification. Uh, I, I, I take it that your pelletizer can't work magic on something that is not already close to specification. Uh, so do you give guidance on how the pyrolysis operator can uh, improve the feedstock to the pelletizer? Well, I think one of the advantages of the Mars mineral pin, uh, pin mixer is that it is somewhat forgiving uh, in terms of the quality of powder that, you know, that is uh, put into the process at that point. Uh, we have pelletized a wide range of powder qualities uh, successfully uh, and been able to meet specifications. Uh, there's there's obviously some some key aspects of uh, powder generation that need to be followed from one uh, manufacturer to the next. Uh, consistency is the key. Uh, you know, while the pin mixer will accommodate uh, fluctuations in manufacturing processes upstream, there are limits to what it can achieve and you know to what sins it can overcome uh, once the powder arrives but certainly consistency in the feedstock the process conditions the milling conditions upstream of the pelletizer lead to uh, more consistent operation in the, in the pin mixer itself and in the results that you get from it now in terms of some of the things that you might have been alluding to um, you know, clearly North American manufacturers, uh, you know, feedstock tires tend to have lower silica content uh, than European tires. Uh, we've been able to accommodate, you know, both extremes. Asians kind of fall somewhere in the middle and, uh, you know, same with South Americans. Uh, so, uh, you know, we can pelletize materials from across the globe uh, but consistency is you know, a key attribute of getting cons you know, consistency in powder generation is key to getting consistent operation of the pin mixer itself and getting key or getting a consistent output uh, in terms of pellet quality. The consistency, I think, is, is something that the rubber compounders have uh, been insisting on. Uh, they, they need to have a consistent supply uh, and then yeah. they can work in the specification. Uh, if they've got a consistency that varies from batch to batch and they, the specification varies from batch to batch, they can't use it. So, right. uh, yeah, all good stuff. How did you get on at the uh, Carbon Black Conference? It's a very good we, conference. Oh, go ahead, Clayton. Just, they just saying, you know, all the decision makers were there, uh, and then the Scotch that came back to a lot of this stuff about consistency and the volume of material, you know. So that is uh, the driving challenges for the industry is to be able to supply to the customers the volume that's necessary for them to set up an operation, and that volume has to be that consistency. So it was a uh, definitely a prime topic uh, amongst a lot of people. Okay.
So is, is there anything else that you want to focus on uh, before we, we wind this up? Yeah, I, I think uh, there are a couple of key takeaways that I'd like your viewers to um, keep in mind uh, when they're looking at uh, potential suppliers of pelletizing equipment, especially our equipment, the pin, Mars Mineral Pin Mixer. Uh, there are really four key things that we bring to the party uh, in terms of value to our customers and to the RCB industry as a whole. Uh, they really boil down to performance, reliability, ease of use, and experience or expertise uh, in pelletizing this kind of material. Uh, as I'd mentioned from the performance standpoint, you know, we generate pellets that meet the requisite size and hardness specs for the target uh, applications for our RCB customers. In terms of reliability, uh, our equipment is uh, manufactured to be uh, low requirement, or uh, excuse me, low maintenance requirements for the equipment. Uh, we focused a lot on materials of construction. So we have uh, all the materials that are resistant to wear from corrosive and um, abrasive materials that could still be present in the powders uh, after pyrolysis. Uh, our equipment is designed to operate continuously. And when we talk about continuously, we're talking about 24 seven operation. The, uh, the moving components, um, the motor, drive gear, basically are, are manufactured with components where the mean time to failure is 17 years. Uh, so we're, we're looking to sell a piece of equipment to our customers so that they can count on uh, performing the same, you know, over an extended lifetime. Um, ease of use, I touched on the testing that we do in our facility. Basically, um, you know, we generate um, a blueprint for our customers that, that can be used for installation and commissioning that basically demonstrate the capability, the capacity and process optimization for a given customer. So it is customized um, you know, for each of, the, of our customers. Uh, and, and a very important part uh, of all this is that uh, we have global experience. Uh, we have installations in every continent of the planet. Uh, we uh, are, are familiar with the uh, requirements of the downstream industries, uh, so we can help guide our customers uh, in terms of uh, capability of our pin mixers to generate product that we know will be commercially acceptable to their prospective customers. So we, we bring an awful lot of uh, value to our customers. And, and that's, uh, as I said, some of the key takeaways we'd like to, you know, our prospective customers, your viewers uh, to come away from uh, with this discussion. Yeah, I think quality is something on, on, on the equipment side, the quality and the service uh, and the support uh, and the longevity of, of the equipment is, is important. Um, there's a, a sector of the market that say, uh, that opts by necessity for the, the, the lowest common denominator in all aspects. And they, from talking to people in the industry who've been successful, uh, one of the reasons that so many companies have not made the grade is, uh, is because of this reliance on, uh, on, on cheap equipment, um, usually from the Far East. The, yeah. Is that something that you would concur on? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've been in the industry or, or in capital industries for many, many years. And, um, you know, there, there's the cost of purchase and there's the cost of ownership. And I think too many people 
are starstruck by the cost of purchase. Uh, so a cheap piece of, or less expensive uh, piece of equipment seems attractive. But as the old adage goes, you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, it's the cost of ownership that really comes to bite you. And that's something which uh, you know, we've focused on is to uh, basically lower the cost of ownership so that when you look at the total value that we bring to our customers versus someone who is selling a less expensive piece of equipment with uh, less reliability and quality built into it and support uh, to keep it functioning, um, you know, our customers will find that, you know, the, at the end of the day, uh, over the time that they depreciate or amortize their equipment, that the value we bring will be significantly greater than our competitors and certainly significant greater, significantly greater than others who are simply selling, selling on price. Yeah. The, the equipment is one component of this. But the other thing is the experience and knowledge of the people in this organization that stands behind us. We've seen a multitude of different materials, different conditions, and based on that knowledge base, we can help our customers work through their challenges. Because sometimes materials do change. And uh, with our experience and knowledge, we're here to help. So that's it for episode 41 of the Tire Recycling Podcast. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our updates to make sure you never miss our content again. We'll be back very shortly with episode 42 as we introduce Rubber Matters to the wider time rubber recycling audience. Until then, stay safe and thank you for watching.